Yeah. You're listening to Fresh Out of the Game. And I'd be so fresh. Fresh, fresh Podcast Network. <laughs> Straight from Tel Aviv, Israel. Let's go. Hi, my name is Hilal Leizorovich. And I'm Rana Vaughn. We are two entrepreneurs from Israel. And we are on a journey to find out what makes entrepreneurs, investors, and CEOs succeed or fail. And we hope to inspire your journey. So, welcome back to another episode of TLV DNA. And today with us is Irid Zinger, the VP Marketing of Winward. Hi guys, great to be here. Hi Iris, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right, Ila was not here on the last episode, but we're here now. Yes, and I so miss we're, you all, we're... guys. <laughs> all right, so let's, let's start our conversation. Tell us sure. a bit about yourself and on Windward in a nutshell. So Windward is a maritime AI tech company. So what we do is bring all our um, domain expertise in the maritime ecosystem and use that to build best in class AI um, machine learning technology to help manage uh, risks for the maritime ecosystem. So it includes banks and uh, insurance companies, um, energy companies, anything or anyone that has to do with the maritime ecosystem. Um, 90% of all shipments is done through the sea, so you can imagine how big that is. Huge. Huge. All right. It's about a, a $17 trillion dollar in- industry, just to give you kind of an estimation. And an agent one as well. Yes, yes. People have been going through the sea... Forever, I guess, you know. Um, and this is one of those um, spaces that is probably slow into going into that transformation of digitalization. And we've seen that in insurance companies and in banks. And I think that now the maritime ecosystem also is taking its first steps in it. And Winward is there to take them hand by hand as a technology partner to that digitalization process. And it's very interesting. So you're a VP marketing, uh, dealing with an ancient segment industry, and your job is to open the doors, right? How do you do that in, in an analog world? Well, I think they're very keen, and I think there are a lot of uh, different um, industries within that ecosystem. So you have banks and insurance companies and energy companies, and they all understand that digitalization is where they need to be. Um, in order to, you know, to compete in the 21st century. Um, so I think they're looking at Winward as their natural partner to do that. And we have some of the biggest names uh, that have already partnered with us. Um, so I think that it's, it's a combination of one trust that they have in us that we will find the best solution for them, which is, um, you know, we have one platform, but it, we do have a process of personalization and services that we provide with that. Um, and I think that it's part of their growth process, the digitalization process, and, and Winward is the natural partner for that. All right. So bringing digitalization to this world, helping uh, the banks and the insurance company to understand the exact risk or the prediction risk on, on the sea, on, on shipments. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go a bit uh, into this and to understand the solution. How does it work? Okay, so first of all, um, the, the C is, is very complex. There is so much information, so much data uh, to process. So if once you, you, know, you could do it with a, an Excel sheet and just uh, get locations and uh, ship to ship transfers, today there's just so much information that you need to process uh, this is where AI comes in so we have over 300 AI models that are building the platform and what we do is give transparency to what is going on in the seas um, so it's not just understanding what is going now but also predictive intelligence so that you can foresee any any risks that 
coming in. Um, ships that are not compliant with uh, world trade regulations, um, sanctioned uh, countries, sanctioned ships. Um, all that information is, is critical to doing business. And banks, insurance companies, uh, trade companies, ship owners, they're all liable for the business they do. So they really need to investigate the vessels, the cargo, um, the corporate structure that, the, that is owning the, the process. Um, and all that information is, is very complex. And what Winward offers is a platform that gives you a go, no go recommendation. So we give the insights, we process all the data that is all the time updated in real time. And we give you insights so you can make your own decisions based on your risk appetite. You know, if you, if you get information about a certain vessel that could be risky in the future or could have some safety issues, and it's your call as a company to decide if you want to use that vessel or not. But we'll give you the full insight. Um, and I think that's the, the great advantage of Windward. So we have be behavioral insights also. So it's not just data. We go far beyond that. So you created a new solution, but you also created a new insurance business model that didn't exist uh, before, right? I don't, I don't know if we created a new insurance model. I'm not sure that's the right phrase. I would say that we've given insurance companies that insure the, the different parts in the, uh, in the funnel of, of trade um, the tools to assess, to better assess um, the uh, the safety or security or, or vulnerability, I would say, of any entity. So it's the same for banks if they need to give uh, credit, you know, for shipment or for any business within the maritime trade, they can better assess the, the deal and, and the entity they're working with. Okay, tell us about the beginning of your uh, journey uh, as a, from the product uh, technology, because you didn't have all the AI and all the insight in the beginning. So how did you focus on the target and what did you do in the beginning of the world? So in Winward, you mean? Yes. Yeah. OK, so, um, so Winward is about a 10-year-old company, really, uh, that started off uh, and was founded by two um, amazing people, um, Matan Pellet and uh, Ami Daniel. Um, who came from the Navy, and their expertise in, in the domain of, of, of the sea, I would say, uh, brought them to, bring, to build a solution that looks at the sea and gives that transparency and understanding of what is going on there. So it started off as a, as a, a platform for more B2G um, solution, and that was the main focus for, for the better part of the, the beginning of, the, of Windward, I would say even until last year. And like in a lot of industries, they came to the understanding that this super technology that was used by governments, um, homeland security, defense intelligence, and so forth, is really um, very productive also for the commercial industry. And so about a year ago, they did that switch into, into the commercial industry and brought this platform also to usage uh, for, like I said, different uh, B2B sectors. And how did you map your customers and your users? Because it, there's a difference between who buy it and who use it. Well, there's definitely a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we talked about it a bit earlier. Um, the people using it, in, in each industry is, is different. So our product is a horizontal product, I would say. So it's the same product, one platform for different verticals, whether it's banks, uh, trade companies, ship owners, it's the same platform with all the insights and the go, no go recommendations. Um, but each uh, industry, each vertical has its, its own workflows and the different personas that actually use it. And I think that the smart thing about uh, the Winward platform is that it really addresses the needs of all the different um, personas, I would say, that want to use it. So we give out reports, so it's very easy for, for uh, executive levels to understand and, and read that report. Um, but it's also very tangible and very easy to use in terms for analysts or any other person within that um, um, process of understanding what is going on with the vessel or the entity. 
Um, and obviously, when we're doing marketing, then we're looking at the, the decision makers and, and probably also C-levels um, that are looking to go into that digitalization process for the company. So I think that we're looking both at the people that are using the product and, and having that user experience on the platform that is very easy to use and very clear and saves a lot of time for people. But also we're looking on, on the marketing side on explaining and educating what the digitalization process is for those companies and what it means for them to have a, a AI-based marine platform that can give them the insights that they need in a very quick way. I love your question, Nilav. You know, I, it, it always amazed me when there's an analyst in the bank or the insurance company that is using your tool. But at the end of the day, as in the head of the marketing and the VP marketing, you say, I need to approach the decision makers. I need to approach the, the CEOs, the, the, the level where decisions are being, are being made. And this is so right. different personas all the time. You know, it looks obvious sometimes, but at the end of the day, it's someone else that makes the decision and brings the tool to the analyst. That's, that's, that's so true. I think that uh, a part of what marketing is supposed to do is really create that awareness and education on the entire industry. So it's not just about understanding the different features of the platform. And you know, we'll save that probably for the, the people that are actually using uh, the platform, but really understanding where it's coming from and why it's important. And, and you know, there are new uh, compliance regulations all the time and, and, and it's growing and it's becoming more difficult to keep up with what you should be doing and what is right and what is wrong and and you know the the bad guys i would say are getting smarter <laughs> at it right so you really want to understand the pirates well it's not just pirates <laughs> but but you know they're all pirates in the sea of course but i think it's more about um the issues of compliance and and trade um that are global um so you have sanctioned uh, countries like iran and so forth and you really need to be compliant on all levels and understanding that it's, it's a difficult task and the technology is the one thing that can really help and, and bring that insight is critical for, for CEOs and for C-levels, obviously, to understand. So I think that we work on the part of educating and showing and, and kind of explaining how AI and machine learning are so critical in the process in today's world. So we learn a lot about Winworld, but we want to meet you and know your process. And I know that you have a very rich background. So tell us about yourself. Um, gladly. So I started off as an electrical engineer, um, graduated from Tel Aviv, worked in uh, R&D developing algorithms for about six years or so. Um, in a variety of companies from, you know, the corporates to the startups of 10 people in a shacky house in Herzliya or whatever. Um, and when I graduated from my MBA, I thought it would be a great opportunity to shift to the business side, which was always really kind of my goal. Um, and I went to learn marketing from the best and, and I did an internship in L'Oreal. Um, and I always say that, you know, the, the geek from the computers came to, to all the, you know, mascaras and colors and all that. And, and I was, a you know, complete transformation, a complete transformation. Yes. Yeah. So I came in for a couple of months and stayed for a couple of years. Um, and it was fascinating. I think that the, the psychology behind marketing and understanding what makes a person choose a specific mascara out of 20 black mascaras that are exactly the same. I mean, I swear they're exactly the same, but <laughs> that woman standing there chooses one specific one and she'll die for it. Um, that, that's really, um, I think, fascinating in my, in, in my view. And it's something that I've taken along with me throughout my career is understanding what makes people tick. What is that one thing that, you know, makes them want to choose windward or any other technology product. Um, I worked at Microsoft, so you know why? Why you know why Windows? Why Word or whatever? Um, eventually, you have a person there. So whether it's B two B or B two C, it's it's 
basically the same. You're talking to people, you're, you're finding the way to reach people and make them trust you and trust your product. And, and I think that was a fascinating start for me um, at L'Oreal. But obviously my passion for technology uh, never ceased. So I went back um, to, to, the, to the tech ecosystem, uh, went back to Microsoft, worked there for, for, for many years. From there, moved on to the startup world, um, to Mobley, uh, where I was CMO. Um, and then to Here Mobility, which is uh, the mobility um, startup of Here Technologies that was founded in, uh, in, in Israel um, and for three years. And unfortunately, with Corona, uh, shut down. Um, and then I found myself at Winward, and I've, it's amazing. Um, Let's focus on the startups. You said you were an early stage startup. So how do you start uh, to sell your first sale to, uh, to, to have the message to create a marketing flow? So I think, I think two things are very helpful. One is, is understand, a good understanding of the product. And I think that my tech back background really helps out here because... I, I understand to a very great extent uh, the product, what it's supposed to do, um, and, and really understand from a, a more uh, user perspective, I would say, of the technology. So that's very helpful. And when you have a good understanding of what the product does and what the product doesn't do, you can, you can sell it better, uh, knowing what the limitations are and, and where the challenges are. So that's one side of understanding uh, what you're marketing. The other side is understanding who you're talking to. Um, and People who, motivations. Yes. What is, what is the motivation? Why would they purchase anything? And, and I'm always saying this, that people don't want to be bothered. I mean, they won't do any effort for anything. If they have to put any energy into something, It's only if they have a really good reason to do it. And figuring out that reason is, is what marketing is all about. And I think that putting a lot of effort in understanding that before you start you know, doing the creative and, and the campaigns and all that, that's, that's the end, you know, that's the finale. Um, the, the tough part is, is cracking the messaging, understanding what, like I said, what makes people tick, you know, what, what makes them want what to buy. What motivates them, yeah. So can you give us an example, like a story uh, from your exploration and of the personas until you, you found your, uh, your moment that you said, okay, I understand them? Well, I can give you an example, a great example of uh, the process that we just uh, recently did uh, with Winward and understanding, I think, um, the financial industry. Because the financial industry, obviously, is a big part of uh, the maritime ecosystem, uh, whether it's giving credit or working with any entity. Um, and like I said earlier, they're liable uh, for, for, the, for being compliant in all the different aspects, whether it's uh, the entity itself, the corporate structure, or, or the vessels, or the cargo. Um, supporting or working with any of those, they, they need to really understand it. Um, and I think we had a very interesting process here in understanding who exactly the personas in the different banks are um, and understanding how they would use the Windward uh, platform. So there are different workflows and there are so many different departments in a bank that work with that could work with the pro platform and we have a few banks already on board but we just started uh really going into that vertical um and it's a fascinating process so we talked to a lot of people that are advisors that worked in uh different trade banks um around the world and did many sessions in in really figuring out and digging into what the workflows are where we bring value, what is the added value that we can bring. So to understand also their point of view. So um, if, if we look at things from our, from our end and the way that we look into a certain investigation of a vessel, 
what does that mean to them? What is their KYC process? Where does it meet them? So we have the different, uh, I think, perspectives uh, in building the, the workflow with our product. And once we got a good understanding, and this is a process that could take weeks, if not months, into really digging in and understanding uh, the go-to-market strategy there. And once we built that, we could work on the messaging. And from there, we're working on the different marketing uh, deliverables, obviously. So for the sales teams, for, for digital, for anything that we do. I have another question because you said that the, the beginning is was a, it was a B2G and now it's a B2B. Mm -hmm. so, and your example was on the financing. But how did you decide which aspect is the best to penetrate? To be from B to G to B to B to B. So, so I think it's really um, basically coming from our, from our founders and from from the company. There's a lot of knowledge and understanding of the maritime ecosystem, um, and understanding the different um, verticals or stakeholders within the process of trade through the sea. Um, you see the, the different verticals, the different companies that are involved. So you know that when you're uh, shipping, I don't know, uh, oil from one country to the other, you understand that the story is not just the buyer and the seller, right? There are so many different uh, stakeholders within that process. And then you figure out who or, or which specific companies are, are in that process. So you understand that you have insurance companies and you understand that you have the trade companies and you understand that you have the ship owners and obviously the banks because everything is, is you know, needs some financial uh, um, support one way or another, whether it's credit or, or whatever. So you kind of break down, I would say, the the whole uh f flow from the moment that you sell something until the buyer gets the, the goods. entire value chain you need to the know. entire value chain yeah. exactly so you said before that in the process of the kyc the know your customer um mm -hmm. a process you talked or investigated a lot of uh, personas in in the ecosystem in your mm -hmm. ecosystem Give us some numbers. Try, try, try to help you know entrepreneurs listening out there. How how many people do you need to talk with? How until you you know you get to this uh, insights where where you get great insights oh, to wow. proceed. You know, <laughs> I I think it's it's it really depends on how complex uh, the 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 product or the solution is, and and if you have like very specific solutions for different or very specific uh, uh, personas, that's one thing. With us, it's, a, it's really a one platform that can serve the bank, for instance, on the all different fronts. So it was a lot of investigating to understand how we can be helpful. So I don't know to put it in numbers, I think, in terms of people, but I can say that it's reading a lot um, and it's a collaborative effort cross uh, company. So it's marketing, working with sales and with product um, to really understand the, the value chain and understand the process um, and, and understanding the different perspectives. So when we, we combine that cross company effort with the different people that we meet. So you talk to people from, from instance, from the financial sector, and if you don't get the answers or you don't feel that you get enough value, you look for more and you read a lot. Um, obviously, this answers, a, uh, I think, a challenge that banks have and they're looking for a solution in, in that industry. So they talk about it and they write about it. So obviously um, on digital, social media, you can get a lot of information, um, whether it's on LinkedIn or whatever. But I think that there are a lot of different also conferences on fintech, all those kind of, I think, help build the picture or a clearer understanding of what the challenge is for them from their end. And being customer centric, I think, is a very important part of, of, of building a product and a solution. And 
a lot of in- entrepreneurs and in, that I've I've met um, through my career are looking at at their own product and how great it is, which obviously is is great, but. Underst- being customer centric and being that partner to to your customer is is the I think most important part. So understanding what they need, not what you have to offer. Yeah, you can't be in love in your idea. You need <laughs> to make sure that you have you actually have a value proposition for you. You need your customer to be in love. Uh, yeah, your product. You need to find a, a product market fit. That's obvious, but but it's not it's not just that. It's about really understanding. what their need is and how you answer that need so that they would understand and find you invaluable so now you're a start you're selling a startup that started in in israel and its founders are from a military background is this part of your storytelling or so first of all i think we're very proud Uh, to be Israelis. Um, and like I said, Ami and Matan are, are uh, ex-Navy uh, people with so much knowledge of the maritime ecosystem um, that it's a very important part of our story. Uh, not only do we bring technology or best-in-class AI uh, technology, but we bring a lot of uh, maritime expertise. I would say our domain expertise is of, a, I don't know, hundreds of years cross companies. So we have people that have been um, working in the maritime ecosystem for, for many years and have joined forces at Windward uh, to bring that knowledge and understanding um, of, of the sea into technology. And I think that's such a unique proposition because you have, you know, I mean, you know it better than I do in Tel Aviv, you have so many AI companies. Um, but this company is so unique with taking all that knowledge of the, of the maritime ecosystem, under, a real understanding of what is going on in the sea, and using that to build the best AI solution possible. Um, so definitely it's part of our story, um, and we're very proud of it. I'm sure that at the beginning that's what led them to a more B2G model, and, and it, it was obvious to go there. Yeah. And then are you looking at this uh, period as like an actual pivot or, you know, you're just saying, no, we're scaling up to, you know, different oh, industries, different business? We're, we're definitely scaling up. I mean, um, like I said, it's, very, it's a very natural step for a company that is B2G to come and say, okay, this technology is great for, for homeland security or, or defense and it can be used now in, in, commercial, in a commercial way. Um, I think it's a, a natural evolution. Um, it was just obvious the, an obvious next step. Um, but it required, I think, a good understanding of the entire value chain, of the whole uh, flow of how and to understand the different verticals of stakeholders. So it's not, think, it's not something that you just jump into, right? So you want to really understand who you're speaking to and what the value proposition is. Um, so it's a lot of work and, and I think that it's very, um, I think, interesting to see how we're growing into that. When, when it comes to marketing, there's always so many challenges and you have a lot of experience. You, can, you know, we've been to L'Oreal, you've been to Microsoft uh, and more. Try to bring um, some of your insights where you came over a challenge and, 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 and you know, it all, the, the channels opened up. So entrepreneurs over there in our audience can, can learn from it and you know, try to adopt it. Well, I, I'd start and say that marketing is super important, um, even for entrepreneurs. Um, and I know that in early stages, um, sometimes this part is neglected um, to some extent. And I think that understanding that marketing can, can help Uh, I say fake it till you make it <laughs> uh, approach. Um, I can tell you that, um, for instance, um, at Here Mobility, we had a huge challenge. So we were b- building a marketplace uh, for, for different uh, mobility solutions, a B2B platform. And this was a stage where we didn't really have a, cu- paying customers, but we had the right concept. We had everything 
in place. We were working on the product market fit and understanding that. Um, and, you know, there was the, the, the great conference, whoever remembers uh, pre-corona, um, CES. Um, sure. And, you know, supposed to be there and show our product and, and do a huge exhibition of, of our capabilities. Um, and this was a huge challenge because, like I said, we didn't have yet the, the exact product market fit. We didn't have um, enough customers to come and say, okay, this is how to do it. But we needed to, to present the story and we did want to talk to customers that were in the very, very first steps of working with us. But, you know, the platform was not full. It was operational to some extent, but once again, it's very early stage, very, I would say, something that a lot of entrepreneurs can relate to, that, that phase where you have something, you know it's good, and now you're trying to build that reputation and story around it. Um, and I think it was a huge challenge because building all those different pieces and, and putting them together to create a story is, is very difficult when you're not, you know, you're not Microsoft, you don't have a huge uh, um, company that is already running with pr different products and, and a lot of uh, sales. And when you're in a startup uh, stage and you wanna tell your story, you wanna tell a really uh, true story. And, and marketing, what it, we do is, we, that's what we do, right? We tell a story, and we tell the story that is true to our customers, it's true to, to us. I mean, integrity is very important. Um, I would never say something in marketing that is not true in terms of what the product does or where we are. But I think that it's, it's showing the different perspectives, and, and sometimes that can be a real challenge. Um, especially in those early stages where you don't have the exact product market fit, but you want to tell the story as if you do. Um, and, and I think that we were working very hard in creating that perspective and talking to customers that have already signed on to the platform, but even if they haven't really um, used it to a full extent, they were already in, in the process of, uh, of a buy-in. So they wanted to use it. They were understanding the usage or how it would help them. Um, and we built you know, a fantastic uh, video showing the different, uh, the different companies that joined the platform from different perspectives. And this, once again, this is a B2B company. But once you put in that human touch, uh, the people behind the names, so you have big names of companies that, that are, are willing to buy into the company, but once you show the people, it becomes more real and becomes true and, and other people can connect and say, oh, okay, so if he's in and he's the CEO of that you know, art company, then we're willing to give it a try as well. Um, so I think that's a big challenge when, when working at a stage where you don't quite have that full product market fit and you're still working on building that. There are many entrepreneurs that are now saying they are completely related for, for what you described because they feel the gap between their actual product and the visionary product they aim to. So try to give them a few tips on the road because you said integrity and you said people, but what other advice can you give them? So I think that there are, there are two parts in, in a company's story. There's one which is the actual product, what we're doing now, the here and now, and then there's the vision. Um, and my, my best advice is to really look at the vision or where you're going, and marketing should always be a few steps ahead. So in, in my view and in my experience, marketing would always, I would always drive to bring the marketing to be, you know, not years ahead of, of what the product is actually, but definitely a couple of months or up to even a year so that you sell the vision because the whole selling process is, is lengthy, right? So if you don't have that feature today, you'll probably have it in the next, I don't know, four months. By the time you're done with with the whole sales uh, process, 
you'll be there. So obviously not promising something or over promising something that doesn't exist or won't exist. But I think that a lot of times uh, entrepreneurs are want to be so uh, precise in explaining what they have, the fear of over promising that they take it to a, a too realistic uh, to the other side, right? And it becomes too narrow. Too narrow, and and you and you want to sell the vision, you want to sell the promise because you want to sell what it does for the customer and how it makes his life easier, better, more uh, uh, productive, or whatever the need is. Um, so you need to build the story and not always go into that deep dive of, of the specific features. I think that that's an important part for entrepreneurs is, is really looking at the wider picture, the broader picture of what the customer is looking for and the vision and how you make his life easier and better. What I would try to, to do now is, is really um, from your point of view, where you wear your glasses as a market, as a VP marketing and try to, to give the best tips you can ever uh, think about for, for entrepreneurs uh, when it comes to marketing. So think of marketing as, as your partner from the start. Um, that's, I, that's, I think, the most important part. Even if you can't you know, afford a, a full-scale uh, marketing team, have someone with a, a good marketing strategy view from the beginning because it can save you a lot of, of I think, of the headaches or, or barriers that will come next. Um, telling the story is super important. Give it thought, give it, you know, it's okay. Build the story. Build the story. Uh, build the story in everything that you do. And it's okay to, you know, to tweak the message, um, change the wordings as you go along. Obviously, marketing is something that lives and breathes. So it grows with the company and dynamic. it evolves and it's very dynamic. So it's not, you know, you can't take a playbook at the beginning and say, okay, that's it. And I'm done. I'm, I'm fine. I took this consultant. He told me what to do and I'm good. It doesn't work that way. So you really need to, to always question and look at your, your marketing strategy all the time as you evolve. That's one important thing that I, I think that, um, entrepreneurs should do more. Um, and I think that defining the vision for the company is something that is super important not only for the marketing but it's also important for R&D and for product and for sales for everyone from you know I always say from the secretary to the CEO everyone needs to be aligned and, and follow a and vision follow the same vision and the vision shouldn't really change and in, in that sense it should be something that you aspire as a company you know to make the world better uh, whatever it may be, but it's something that should be clear to everyone. And building and that story around that vision is is important from the start. So don't you know? Don't wait until you're already selling to start building that. Obviously, you can wait down the line to start digital marketing and and campaigning and stuff like that. But telling your story and have a clear understanding of what you offer to the world. Um, is, is important from the beginning, from day one. And we know from entrepreneurs, there's lots of time there's a gap between, not a gap, it's actually a tension, okay, between uh, the product, new versions, features, and how the, the marketing is uh, ready to, to sell it. And they, there's different expectations. So how do you bridge a gap? How do you advise to bridge that gap? Well, communications is key, right? <laughs> um, eventually, um, there's always some tension between the different departments. Um, and what makes a company strong is having uh, that triangle of sales and business operations versus product versus marketing. And all three of those are building the strong company story. 
Um, and understanding that tension is, is healthy as long as you communicate it. Um, and, you know, I, I can tell you an example from, from real life, from my day-to-day. -day. Um, product has a feature release, which is amazing. And we want to tell the full story. So I was coming and say, okay, we'll tell the full story. And product was saying, well, we just have the first three features. Let's let's wait until until we have everything. I mean, it's going to take a few few more weeks. It's going to take a two more months, whatever. And so we had a training yesterday uh, to the sales team, and we presented it as the full story, saying this: we have the whole set that you need as a, as a feature. And it's okay when you, when you do the training to explain to the salespeople, okay, this will come in a week and this will come in two weeks. But, but it's a part of a full but story. But it's part of a full story. And marketing's position is to tell that full story because when you get salespeople out, you want them to have all the ammunition they have or they, they need um, to, to, to win. And going into the details of, oh, yes, this feature is next week or this feature will be in two weeks, that's, that's not interesting. Nobody really, I mean, we obviously care, but the customer itself can't be involved in such minor details of when exactly things are, are coming out. And I think that tension is healthy because, you know, product will say, okay, this is what we have, understand it, it could take a, a while. And marketing obviously needs to know the real story in order to decide the timing and how to bring it out. But it's really important that we communicate all the time and we understand the facts and then we understand what, you know, what we're telling. VP marketing. Marketing always has competition. Different products on the industry, on the market. How do you compete? How do you analyze? How do you make the strategy? So first of all, I love competition. Um, I'm, I think I'm a very competitive person and having competition is, is really saying that you're on track, is saying that there's a market, that it's interesting, and that there's a lot to be done there. Um, so I'm never f afraid of having good competition and it's always, um, I think, one of the best uh, um, ways to know that you're doing something right is when the competition kind of uses your phrases or your messaging. Um, I can tell you from here mobility that when three years ago, um, it was a bit more than three years, about four years ago, when we actually um, built the marketplace, we were thinking everybody was using the word platform for mobility and so forth. And I said, well, let's use marketplace, not, not platform. Let's use mobility marketplace. Um, I think about half a year, a year down the line, next CES, most of our competitors were using Mobility Marketplace. And I felt really good about it because well, everybody was saying, oh my God, you know, there are so many now Mobility Marketplaces, how do you differentiate? And I was like, that's great. It means that this whole ecosystem has an understanding that there is a need for a Mobility Marketplace. And it doesn't matter if, if you know, they implement it in a different way than we do, but just that knowing that acknowledgement that there is a need and there's a market for that is, is super important. And obviously it's a great way to, to grow the marketing um, aspect of things. Um, so like I said, I love competition and I think that we learn from the competition. So obviously I, I would sign up to, to um, webinars or newsletters even and follow them on LinkedIn. Um, I learn from everyone. I think that Learning something new every day is, is what makes me excited about marketing. And, and I do it through the competition as well. So sometimes, you know, they have great ideas as well. I think that what we're doing is, is probably, I would say, good. Um, but there's always something to learn from the others. And, and I think that we kind of feed each other with that. Sometimes you have a real differentiation in technology, but sometimes, like you said in the beginning of our episode, there's a mascara and they are all the same. So what do you do when you don't feel that you have an actual differentiation? 
Well, I think that unlike mascaras, um, <laughs> I think with technology, <laughs> there is a differentiation. Um, and in every company that I've worked for so far, um, there was a clear uh, technological advantage or uniqueness to the, to the product, to the platform. Um, having said that, there's a lot of um, blur around the differentiation. And, and, you know, just like in mascaras, people will say, okay, so it's one mobility marketplace, another mobility marketplace, or this is a productivity tool and another productivity tool. So it's really understanding the, I would say, the killer feature that the product has that you kind of own in both product and also in, in the marketing aspect. So you would emphasize it on your product on the platform itself through UI, UX, um, but also through marketing. So it's, it's really finding that killer differentiator. Um, and it's also the same for mascaras, by the way. You can see it in the different campaigns. I mean, going back a bit to, to L'Oreal and, and the fashion industry, that is exactly what they do. They find that killer differentiator that they can tap on, which obviously it's a, it's a black mascara, but each and every one has this really small nuance that speaks to the customer in a very, very specific way. And, and then they expand it and they work on that. So when you do marketing, you don't talk about everything. You don't talk about mascaras that it's black, but you talk about that killer feature that makes the difference. Um, and same goes for technology. And in marketing, that's what we do. So we have a marine AI technology solution. And we look at what our, our killer feature is. And you know, from, from the go, no go uh, recommendations and the behavioral insights, all those are things that are very, very unique to our platform. And just to the question of of the competition, we now see that the competition is also starting to use the, go, the, no, term, go. the term of insights and, and, and even sometimes behavioral insights. And it's really something that others may use it loosely, but really we have the technology to, to back that up. You use the go, no, go phrase uh, a lot. Is that, is that something that you use in your marketing messages? Absolutely. It's, it's not just the marketing, it's the actual product. Because like I said earlier, for Winward, there's just so much data to process that you can't really do it on your own, even if you had a, a, a field of analysts working for your company. Um, and the bottom line recommendation, just think of, of all the time and energy and efforts and resources that you're saving and to reach that kind of go, no go. So it's, it's really a phrase that, that says so much about the platform. It, it simplifies your, this huge headache of, of millions of data, billions of data points that you need to process at every each moment. Yeah, people, people always wish to have like a, a zero one decision. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you say go, no go, you say the same only, yeah. you know, verbally. And, and, but that's a very high promising as well. Well, we, we keep, we keep on our promise, you know, I mean, the, the beauty, I think of, of the platform is that on the one hand, it gives you the go, no go recommendation. On the other hand, if you scroll down the platform, you get what brought us to that decision. So we really analyze and there's a lot of transparency. I think that, you know, the values of the company of being a, a trust worthy and, and a partner and obviously transparency those come into the product as well. So we really explain and you can see the different factors that brought us to that go, no go decision. Um, and then you can, you know, it's, it's your decision to take. It's not that we, you know, turn down an entity, a company or a vessel. It's your decision as a company to make that call, but we give you the full insight so that you can make the best decision for you. So we really, power any organization with maritime AI to make the best decision for them. It's their decision. We just give the insights. It's not just, but we give the insights. It's a lot of work. And, and I think that that comes very uh, clear through the product. And how do you maintain the customer relationship? So customer relations is, is something that is always, uh, I think, 
ch- it's sort of a challenge on the one hand, and, and it's, it's very intriguing because they already have the buy-in, they understand the product. And I think that, you know, this isn't perhaps pure marketing, but making sure that the customer uses the product to its full extent is something that is really important. And I think that our customer success team um, is definitely focused on that. So, you know, there are different features and new features and developments going on. And you want to make sure that the customer sees all that because the next time they need to, you know, renew their contract, it, they're in, you know, they, they can go two ways. They, on the one hand, they can say, oh, this is a great platform. We're using it where we see the benefit. On the other hand, they they can say, you know, it's okay, but I need more and I, I don't know how to use, you know, um, and making sure that the customer really gets the full value is really important. I would say that um, when I was at Microsoft, for instance, um, I was in charge of a business unit of the the Windows and Devices business unit. And it's not just about, you know, selling licenses. I think that one of my major KPIs was deployment because you want to make sure that not only do they buy the product, but they actually use it and they use it to the best way possible and to the full extent. And I can tell you that that was really a major KPI and something that I worked on very hard to make sure that they deploy the, the actual license and used uh, the product so that next time when it came to renew uh, the, the contract, they wouldn't say, oh, I, it's okay, I didn't use what I had, so why would I renew now? You right? knew you, they use it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And how you create a more um, emotional value for your brand and product? Well, that's, that's the secret sauce of any good marketing, <laughs> right? I mean... Um, Connecting to your customer on an emotional level, um, kind of getting them to fall in love a bit with the brand, um, to really want to be part of your story. Um, that's, that's really what marketing is all about. And, and you have to find that way to connect on an emotional level. So it's not just, you know, a, a, a technical side that they say they need it or they don't need it, but they really want to be part of your brand, part of your story, part of your, of your vision, where you're going, uh, part of the journey. Um, and when, and when you get that, then, then you have a good, a good marketing system going on. Do you feel you're there with Winward or on the way? I, th- I think that with Winward, it's, uh, it's, it's something that we're building. Um, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm fairly new to the company. I've joined uh, about three months ago. So I would say that we're building our story. Um, and um, I can tell you that a lot of exciting things are going on um, and in preparations and more to come very soon. Um, I'm personally in love with the brand. I think it's, I think it's an amazing solution that brings a lot of, a a lot of, uh, I would say a lot of good to the world, not just to the specific companies. It does good. And for me, at least that's something very important in all the, in all the choices that I've made throughout my career. Um, and it's a combination of, you know, technology and the sea. Who can ask for anything more, right? <laughs> Sound like you're personally uh, engaged with the mission that you have. I am. I'm, I can never work for, some, for a company that I am not completely and totally um, committed uh, to, to the vision. Um, of course, it's all about people eventually. So I think, you know... Um, I find the people amazing and, and so dedicated and, I, and so smart. So it's just a combination of everything together. So yes, completely there. I think this is a great tip for the end of this episode saying that you have to be connected to the values and the vision. This brings Absolutely. a lot of wind. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think that, you know, in, in anything that you do if if you're not fully committed if you don't f- 
feel it you know, from inside, the passion, the, the, the fire um, to, to make this and, and to grow with that company. And, you know, it's, it, there, are, there are good times and there are challenges, like we spoke of earlier. It's not all uh, Garden of Roses. It's, you know, you have challenges, but when you know that you're with the right people and the right team, and you're doing the right thing with a good product um, and doing good to the world, um, then then even going through the, the harder times and even going through challenges is something that you look forward to because you always grow from there. You're up to the challenge. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Ila, it's so good to have you back today. Never disappear again. And we want to say thanks <laughs> to Thank so Irit. Thank you Thank you so much. This it was, was so very, much fun. I it really was very educated. It. Yeah. Thank you very much. And this was another episode of TLV DNA. You can listen to all the podcasts and episodes on all platforms through Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and watch this episode on YouTube. Thank you, everybody. And see you on the next episode.